Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another Life Impact Session with New Bethel Church Ministries. We are a church controlled by the Spirit of God. We welcome you tonight. We appreciate you all joining us. We are located 745 Walker Avenue. Our pastor is Honorable Bishop A. Glenn Brady. Amen. And we would love for you to join us. We, we're glad for you joining us tonight. Uh, we have been covering uh, a special session with the Christian education entitled, Can I Get a Witness? Amen. Can I Get a Witness? Before we go any deeper, we're going to go ahead and go before God in prayer. So we ask at this time that you join us in, in uh, looking to God, seeking God tonight with us. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you, God, thanking you for this day. Lord, we thank you right now for your grace, your mercy. Lord, your peace, Lord, that passes all understanding. Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, for how you have sought us out, Lord Jesus. You have uh, uh, sought us, Lord Jesus, and brought us closer to you, God. You you looked for us, Lord Jesus, when we weren't even thinking about you, Lord. We thank you right now, how you searched our hearts, you searched our minds, our spirits, Lord, how you planted a seed, Lord, and a desire in us, Lord, for us to seek you out, God. We thank you right now for your word, Lord Jesus, that uh, humbles us and shows us, Lord Jesus, who we are, Lord, and what we must do to be saved. God, we ask that you bless this life impact tonight. Lord, help us right now to seek your face, God, in all things, in all ways, Lord Jesus. We ask right now that you touch those that are sick and afflicted, God. Heal their bodies, Lord Jesus. Those, Lord Jesus, that the enemy has come against, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are able to give them victory right now, Lord Jesus. We declare that someone will hear the word, that the seed will be planted, Lord Jesus. Lord, and that it'll be watered, Lord Jesus, by the word on tonight. We ask that you bless each participant. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for uh, tonight's service. And we just, again, want to welcome you to this Life Impact, Can I Get a Witness? Amen. So far, we have had beautiful, beautiful uh, services on this Bible class. And what we have done is we've taken the word witness and we have turned it into an acronym. Amen. So each letter uh, describes something or explains something about being a witness for God. And it is so imperative in these last days, amen, that we 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 give our all to God as his witnesses, amen. The first, uh, the first night was W, wisdom in witnessing. Elder Gray uh, came to us and explained to us that God, um, he is our wisdom and he is our foundation. And to be effective witnesses and to live in wisdom, amen, we must follow God and seek God. The next was I, intentionality. Amen. We heard from Brother Colvin about how we need to hear from God. Amen. Not just God hearing from us, which is important, but we also need to make sure that we are being intentional and allowing God to speak to our spirits and our hearts. Amen. Then there was testimony. Amen. Uh, we heard a beautiful, uh, beautiful testimony from Elder McKinney. Amen. He, he did a role play. Amen. And he and he had some witnesses. There was testimony there that was testifying and the enemy was testifying. Uh, and it was a beautiful illustration. Amen. Of how God has really intervened in our lives. Really, there is a testimony written on all of our lives. The Bible says we are living epistles. Amen. And the testimony has already been written in heaven. And then we had a beautiful panel that talked about name calling. If you missed it, my God, you missed a blessing. It was three powerhouses witnessing, telling us about the name of Jesus. If you're going to be a witness for God, you cannot get away from the name of Jesus. Amen. And then we had each one reach one. That was a duo, each one reach one. And it was a beautiful service talked about really how our witness is about our lives, not just our words, but we draw others to God, you know through our life. And if we, you know, we may not be able to get the whole world in on this thing, but if I can reach one person, then I am doing something in the kingdom of God. Tonight, we have a special one for you. We are the seekers. Amen. We are the seekers. And let me tell you, the seekers are taking the stand tonight. The seekers, you should be excited because we're not just seekers. Amen. We are investigators. I'm here with three dynamic investigators. Amen. And they are going to come to you tonight and really give uh, their evidence of what God has done. Amen. And so as 
uh, we start, we're going to really jump into this thing and let God have his way and move in the way that he wants to tonight. Amen. All right. So we are going to jump into this thing. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? And so I want to start off by just giving us a little understanding of seekers. Seekers are investigators, amen? And what the, the, the definition of a seeker, it allows us to understand that seekers really deal with evidence in a way unlike anybody else does. You think about a court case um, and you understand that the seekers are the investigators. They have handled this evidence. They have spent personal time dealing with this evidence, digging deep to uncover the truth, to establish the truth of God. Amen. And so we have some dynamic investigative reporters here tonight. These, these detectives of the doctrine, we will call them. And, and they're here to share, amen, with us. And I'll let you know that these investigators, these expert witnesses, they have been affirmed according to the word of God. they um, uh, We went over it and they have affirmed uh, and are witnesses to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So our first witness that we are going to have tonight, uh, uh, expert witness, is Elder Green. He will be coming to us to testify. Excuse me. Amen. She will be coming to testify on the evidence of salvation. The evidence of salvation amen so i'm just going to ask you to write you know put into the chat uh evidence of salvation that seems a little long but trust me this word but she's got some dynamic stuff the evidence of salvation amen all right praise the lord elder green praise the lord is the lord now as as an expert witness testifying about the evidence of salvation I know that you are someone who has extensively uh, worked in what is known as the birthing room. Um, and we would like you to first, as you come to the stand, um, please uh, give us your personal account um, about the birthing room, what takes place, what, what this is about with those who are seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, good evening and praise the Lord to everyone. Um, I thank God for being a part of the birthing room experience. And a question was posed to me, uh, what do I see in the birthing room? And that's a power pack question. So the first thing I see are individuals. Okay. Yes. These are individuals who are seekers. They are coming to seek. God for themselves. Yeah. And then I also see individual individuals who are inquiring of God for direction. That's a seeker. Um, they rely on God, okay? They believe that God is almighty and that they need his help. So when they come into the birthing room, they're looking for that help. The word of God has drawn them and now drawing them, draw them, and now they're waiting on instructions to have a life-changing experience. Then um, I, I see uh, their readiness because they have courage. It takes courage to come to God. And mm -hmm. so now they have courage to come in the room to leave their seat takes courage. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes it seems as if the pastor's preaching and nobody's moving and you hear God talking to you. And that one individual would get up and walk all the way down and agree that, yes, Lord, I need you. Yeah. And then they come out with a person that they don't know. <laughs> that takes courage to receive instruction on the birthing process. Yes. So that's another thing I see. Then I see uh, these seekers as being worshipers. Think about Acts 2 verses 1 through 4 in the upper room. Mm -hmm. There were 100, 120 people that yeah. were there. 
and they had been instructed by our Savior to stay there until they receive power. Yeah. That was their instruction. And so they're in the room. They're not just sitting down. They're seeking God. Yeah. So in seeking, I did a little study about the Jews. And they were mostly Jews that were in that room. And I found out that, you know, the temple had been destroyed. And they used to bring a sacrifice. So mm -hmm. after the temple was destroyed, it changed. And what they brought was their prayers. Yeah. So when they go into prayer, hallelujah, they're worshiping God. So yeah. I see people coming into the birthing room. And sometimes before we can say anything to them, they already are worshiped. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. I love you, Lord. You're good to me, Jesus. I, I love you. Give me more, Lord. I want you, Jesus. And they begin to go into our worship. Yeah. So I see that. Then I see that they are obedient because if you're going to get something from God, you got to obey his word, okay? And Isaiah talks to us about Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 7, about obedience and Psalms 1, 19 and 2, yes. uh, about seeking and obedience. They go hand in hand. If you're going to receive from God, you got to obey. Yes, yes, yes. And those who come back that are ready, they're obeying. If we say clap your hands, they're clapping their hands. If we say say hallelujah, they're saying hallelujah. So it shows a readiness to receive. Then I see those who are concerned um, about God's word um, and God. They're, they're so concerned uh, about following his directions. Mm. The, the pastor said, get up and come down and you can receive salvation. And then someone in the birthing room is saying, now this is what you're going to experience. Then we take them to Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 29, and we read it out to them what's go what God promised in the Old Testament. Yes, and yes, then we yes. say, hold up, let's go to the New. Then we go to the New Testament, we take them to Acts chapter 1, and we show them how God had told them to stay in the upper room, mm -hmm. and he had made them a promise. Then he comes back in verse 8 and says, I want you to stay there till you receive the Holy Ghost. That's the promise. Yes. Because you're going to receive power. Mm -hmm. So now they're there waiting, and we go to Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, and we find these people in one place on one accord. Yes. Worshiping God, and suddenly they are yes. still. There, there you go. There you go. In comes, in comes mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. And it gives utterance. So we show yes. them that it's the spirit that's going to give you utterance. You're not doing it. God is. But your readiness is important. So I, those that receive, I see their readiness. And then some of them that come in, um, they're, they are wholehearted, okay? They know it's not about them. Mm -hmm. It's about God. It's yeah. about what God wants for me. God has made me a promise. And you go back in Jeremiah 29, read 11 through 14, and you find out what God is doing with their whole heart. What happens when you worship God with your whole heart? So yeah. now we're in the birthing room. We got these people I call that are ready. Because what I see when they come in is their readiness. Yes. I also see if they're not ready. Okay, but they're readiness. So now they're in there and they're ready. We have read them the word of God because it's God who prepares the heart. Yes. And people need to know that this is not a philosophy. Right, this right, is right. The word of God and that it says that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will not pass away. So this is credible evidence. Amen. So now they got something that they can look at that's in the Bible, mm -hmm. God's word itself. So yeah. then at the end of that, after I see their readiness, I see the transformation or what I call the birthing process. And uh, if you've ever been in a delivery room with someone, uh, it is a wonderful experience for most. Some people pass out. But when you think about it, there's a time mm -hmm. when the woman is to push. Yes. And what we see in the birthing room is the timing of God. 
All so right. we know when it's time for us to say, go ahead, praise him, say it again, open your mouth. And then next we see your countenance change. Yes. And next we see the evidence. We hear the sound. And next thing we know, you're speaking in other tongues as the spirit gives utterance. And then comes the joy. Everybody does things different. Some people just yeah. laugh. Other people um, rejoice and say, thank you, Jesus. Some people say, who? <laughs> Oh, I never felt like this. So yes, that's some yes. of the things that I see in the birthing room. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate that testimony. I actually I want to go back one spot as you were uh as you were giving your your testimony on the stand. Uh one of the word uh one of the scriptures I wanted to bring out was Proverbs 14 25. A true witness delivers souls. My God. But a deceitful witness speaks lies. And something you had stated was that, you know, a lot of times if this is a person's first time and they come, you know, and they 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 come up to the altar and they're asking for prayer, the devil does play on that because people are like, I, I don't know who you are. You know, I, I've never done this before. What, you know, you're telling me even when they go to the birthing room and, you you know, you're talking to them and they're trusting, right? And you kind of hit on this. Can you elaborate more about um, as God is pulling on the heart, you know, and, and Acts, it says that they were pricked in their hearts and said, men and brethren, what shall we do? So as God is dealing with somebody, uh, can you elaborate a little more on how the evidence of the word of God does prepare the mind and the heart of the speaker, whether that's from the man of God as he was preaching and teaching or whoever is giving the word for that time, or even in the birthing room, as you were going over the scriptures, how does the evidence prepare, the evidence of scripture prepare for the evidence of tongues? That's a great question. And what it does is it breaks up the follow ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it breaks up those past uh the past information that you have about what the Holy Ghost is or is not, okay. it, it breaks up your doubt, it breaks yeah. up the fear, and it yeah. makes a clean path mm. for God to walk in. Wow. Okay, because his, his word actually leads and guides you to the place yeah. he wants you at. And we all come here with preconceived ideas about yeah. what the Holy Ghost is from people that we have heard, okay? Yeah. And everything there that's not actual, factual, and correct. That's so right. God breaks that up. He breaks that stony heart up. You know, yes. sometimes people come back there because they have been pricked in their heart. But when they get back there, they feel like they don't have to do this or they don't have to do that. And th this is good. You know, just baptize me and let me go. Mm -hmm. But when the word, when the word of God breaks up that stony heart, they can hear God. Yes, yes, and yes, so yes. Clearly, the path is clear. It's just like footprints in the sand. All you know, right. Them, but God is coming closer and closer as you feed them the word. That's why it's important when you work in the birth of your room that you use the Bible. Amen. Uh, yeah. Use the word. Uh, it said, let the word do the work. Let the word. God's word could yeah. do more than we ever can. It will break it down. And yeah. also God will give you wisdom while you're giving them the word on how to talk to them so they'll understand. Sometimes I'm talking to a person and they're listening, but then I have to ask them the question, what do you do in life? Mm -hmm. And when they tell me I can present a scripture from yeah. that particular avenue. Wow. Yes. So yes. You're playing basketball and this is your position. What is the goal? So my, our goal here today mm -hmm. is we're going to uh, slam dunk that ball, okay? Yeah, yeah. We, to get, we got to get past fear. We got to get yes. past doubt. We got to get past tiredness and all those other things that have been hindering us. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's the abusive loved one. Yes. So you're talking to me the word, but I'm thinking about how my head just got beat up last night. So mm -hmm. we get them past that, how God is going to yes. fix that, and God will begin to speak through his word. Yes. Break down all that fear, that doubt, 
and then bam, it happens. All right. That's all. That's it. Somebody put in the chat, slam dunk, because <laughs> it happens. Uh, I was going to ask you, Elder Green, uh, this is a different question. You, you must be you must be dancing over there. You got all that energy. I hear you, you know, over there just giving God praise. I don't know if 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 it's allowed for for uh, expert witnesses to shout on the stand, but if you feel it, go ahead and let them do it for you. <laughs> you know, uh, I, will. <laughs> I know you will. Yes, um, I want to now pivot as you were talking about the evidence of the word and how it prepares us. Um, the the you know you talked about how individuals come in and we're dealing with so many different things that you know we're we, we're seeking the Lord. This is a room for seekers. This is a space for seekers. And sometimes we get, uh, you know, when you talk about court cases, there's the chain of custody for evidence. It has to be handled right, right? Uh, in order for it to count towards the, the uh, to count in court. And so sometimes seekers will fabricate evidence in the birthing room. You know, sometimes we try to help God and he doesn't need our help. So can you talk about um, how do you work with individuals? Because sometimes we do come in with preconceived ideas of what we think we know about God or, or how it's going to happen. How do you work with individuals um, in regards to that fabrication of evidence um, so that they can receive the true evidence of salvation? Thanks for asking that question. I have had several incidents where people have come in and decided to make up their tongues. And uh, another worker, my supervisor and I, we'll look at each other and smile and we let them go for a few minutes and, you know, they make up their tongues. And after a while, uh, she'll give me the nod, which means go ahead and I will stop them and call them by their name. And let's just use Billy tonight. And I'll say, Billy, I said, okay. Um, what did we read in Acts chapter two, verses one through four? Let's go back and read that. Because what I want him to do is rehearse yes. that it says, as the spirit gives utterance. Yes. So yes. Who is. Is that spirit that is yes. Jesus that's going to give the uh, utterance. Yes. So then I laugh and I said, God doesn't need any help. Right. right. Stop laughing. I said, and they'll look at me and sometimes they want to know how I know. I said, I've been at this a long time. So mm -hmm. I know the evidence. Yes. I know when God is coming in and that's what they don't realize. So that's why I remember one person just went on and went on and we just smiled when they got finished. And I said, you know what? I say sometimes as women, especially when we've been divorced or single for a long time, we are in control. We like to control everything because we've had to do it. I said, but you got to give up those keys, my sister. And we'll bust out laughing and give up the keys. Let God have the control. I guarantee you, he know how to speak through you. And we know when he's speaking through you. And they'll go back and most every one of them have received the Holy Ghost. But I mean, remember, for some of them, the Holy Ghost has to sound like their aunt when they had it or their neighbor they heard speaking. I've heard many people who have spoke fluently. Everybody knew they had the Holy Ghost, but they didn't believe it because it didn't sound like sister so-and-so when they would hear her praying through their window. And so we had to go back and help them to understand that God is personal yeah. and you won't sound like that other person. God will give you the language and it yeah. won't be when you speak. So you don't have to worry about it when you know you're not speaking. You know it's not you and you hear it. What is that called? Is it the Holy Ghost is saying, let's go back in. And most of the time they go back in, they will receive the Holy Ghost and they'll laugh later. But remember, that's that preconceived ideas. You know, yeah. if yeah. somebody we knew uh, spoke a certain way, we think that when we get the Holy Ghost, we're going to speak the same way. That's why it's important to take time to give them the word of God. So even in that, uh, we discussed previously about the atmosphere that is being set, you know, and it just doesn't start 
um, in the birthing room. It's even in the sanctuary. It's even whatever has happened, even at Christian education or Sunday school. So talk about the environment um, that is being set and why it's important to set that environment uh, for, for seekers. Okay, if I could go back to the birthing room, a natural birthing room. If you notice when you're in one of those birthing rooms, it's something about the lighting. They sign to close the shed. The colors that they use are soft colors, okay? It's private and it's intimate. Right, right, right. And you have control. You don't have people coming through to get to the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or uh, people coming through to get take a shortcut to get to another room. Uh, right. it, it has a special purpose. So the atmosphere of the birthing room should be one that's conducive for God to come in, where prayer and worship has went up. So in the birthing room, we must make sure as those working in the birthing room that we set the atmosphere. In some churches, they have a special room that's called a prayer room, and only people go in there to pray and to receive the Holy Ghost. There is no uh, outside meeting going on in that room. There is no deaconess meeting, no alt evangelist meeting. It has a single purpose. But not every church is fortunate enough to have a special room because they're growing at a rapid pace. So sometimes one room may be used for several things. So what you have to do is when everybody leaves, you set the atmosphere with prayer. Mm -hmm. Our birthing room, we have Sunday school in it. And sometimes there might be a special event going on a training session. But I'm mindful of that, that when that session is over, sometime through the week, I'm coming in there and I'm going to pray and I'm going to bind spirits that were left. And I'm saying this because sometimes people don't believe in it, but we all bring a spirit with us, yeah. positive or negative. And spirits like clean places. So now we got somebody with an angry spirit and whatever kind of bitterness and whatever, they come in that room and it's cleaners like, wow, this is good, this is cool. And it stays, the person leaves. Now people come to receive the Holy Ghost. They're trying to receive, but something is running cross interference. Yeah. And that's that negative spirit. So now you have to charge it. And as birthing uh, mothers and fathers, when we're in there, our mind have to be on one accord. Back to the scripture. We can't be talking about our pot roast, the chiefs or the stillers. Yes, I said stillers. We can't be talking about them at that time. We right. can't be talking about what we think should have took place and that didn't take place or somebody coming in a certain way. Our mind must be on. I'm expecting God to come at any time. Right. So yeah. You come in there, you charge that atmosphere. I don't know if some of you knew a uh, Catherine Kuhlman. She was an evangelist from way back when I was growing up. But when she would come to visit, she would not even step onto the, I call it the stage, the pulpit, until the atmosphere had been set. Mm -hmm. There was something about the atmosphere in which she stepped on it. It was easy to minister. And I often tell people, in the birthing room, the atmosphere has to be set. Yeah. We have these group of sisters. And sometimes they don't come all the time, but sometimes the Rogers girls will come in. And when they come in, nobody has to tell them. They walk through the door, like, bless your name, Jesus, and hallelujah. And they yeah. take control of the atmosphere. And I'm sitting over there working with this person. I'm like, yes, Lord, my helpers don't come. And then next thing you know, the person is speaking in tongues because their atmosphere set us. They didn't come in and say, do you need any help? They understand this atmosphere has to be correct. Pastor has preached. We can't let this soul leave. Hallelujah. Without receiving the Holy Ghost. So you set the atmosphere, but it's not just in the birthing room. It's in the sanctuary. 
That's and right. people can receive the Holy Ghost at their seat or walking to the altar, at the altar, when the atmosphere has been charged. And we saw something Sunday about the atmosphere being charged. It was so charged, the pastor, I didn't think he was going to be able to preach, but God yeah. came through and wrecked the house and his glory was there. And yeah. at the end of the service, four people came up yes. and a couple came back. But the atmosphere is already charged, so she's already at mm -hmm. another plateau. Now she gets back to the birthing room, it's charged. Yes. And before we do it, she goes down in the water and comes up. She's already drunk in the spirit. Yes. Yes. And uh, the other deaconess is helping her to get dressed. And you can see that God was all over. And I was just waiting for her to put that last piece on. So I said, go ahead, go in. Praise <laughs> them. The next thing, she was speaking in tongues because yes. the atmosphere has set. So it's so important to set the atmosphere. Yes. Because it uh, clears way for God to come in. It gives him a stage to stand on and perform. And if you ever been to um, a concert, sometimes the artist doesn't come out there until that room is set and the people. Yes. And are they carrying on and somebody else's song? And now then they come out. Because it's easy now. The people are already pumped. Now I'm just walking into that vein and I'm going to turn it up. So I told what you. we do is. I told you she was going to be and God mm. turns it up. I told I told you she was going. I, I saw those hands going. I said, okay, that's it's about to happen. <laughs> but that's beautiful. I, I appreciate that that testimony. Everything you said was just so true. Uh put it in the chat. Find that unclean spirit. Set the atmosphere. That's that's how we see God work. Uh, uh, when we when we allow him to take control and we set the atmosphere with our praise, our worship, the word, and and it doesn't give the enemy any room. I, I would say elders are definitely dismissed from the witness stand. You have more than provided enough evidence tonight for seekers. If there's any investigators out there, any investigative reporters, she was giving you enough to, to report on this case that the Lord is still in the saving business. If you are seeking God, if you are seeking salvation, he is still in the saving business and he'll do it. We could do an altar call right now. Oh my goodness. All right. But I'm going to call up to the stand right now. Um, a dynamic woman of God. And actually, I want to say this before, if you were wanting to know what those scriptures were, we were in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, and Proverbs chapter 14 and 25. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, Proverbs 14 and 25. Amen. At this time, I am going to call up our second expert witness. Amen. This is Sister Frida Relaford, and she is going to be giving us evidence she is going to present on intercessory prayer. Amen. Intercessory prayer. And I'm actually I'm going to bring up her scriptures and then I'm going to get out of her way. We're coming from Acts 1 and 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brother. And you see how those words, how how what Elder Green was talking about, and now how this it just flows right in. Romans 26 and 27. Likewise, the spirit also helps our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for uh, as we are, but the spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. We can't copy it. God has to do it. He has to give the utterance and he that searcheth the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints of God according to the will of God. Amen. That is the word. So my first question, please share with us your experience as leading the prayer intercessors and, and what makes, uh, or what it means really to be an in intercessor. Amen. God bless you. Glad to be here. Uh, hope I speak something that will help someone. Yes. Uh, the question is, what is the experience of leading prayer? I've been, um, as people sometimes say, dabbling. 
in prayer for a long time. <laughs> but um, it started when I was very young. And I would I was had the influence in prayer and throughout my life. Once my parents got saved and we saw them praying, we followed suit. It was the time when you prayed. Every time mom and daddy praying, you pray, morning, noon, and night. And we would pray. And we understood that through, through prayer, many things can happen. Right. Many miracles can happen. And um, we would, um, I've seen the power of prayer when uh, my parents did, needed something, and we start praying, and it happened. And as I was growing up, my, my aunts would tell me, call me up to pray with them all the time. I'm nine and 10 years old now. I'm praying, <laughs> praying with these people. But God had put a spirit of intercessory on me. And so it comes from a child. And I thank God I can, I can remember seeing, I was just, this is the uh, uh, Elder Green talking about the um, birthing room. I, my, my, one of my aunts was in a house. And I was praising God with her and praying with her because she needs the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And right now, she's filled with the Holy Ghost. And right. here I am. She says, I was saying, you can do it. And right now, she, she, was a, she became a pastor, wow. preacher, a pastor. And God used us when we open ourselves up to be used by God. We make a connection with him. Yeah. And, um, that's the important thing about um, leading prayer. It's, 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 a, it's been an honor and a joy to see the people of God gather together on one accord, one accord mm -hmm. again, yes. on one accord to come together to move, to have the movement of God in, within us, the spirit of God within us. And so down through the years, it's been that way. Uh, this, the church was built on prayer and fasting and that's how we have to continue to build up on it yes, and um the experience of prayer is that i've seen people healed delivered filled with the holy ghost lives changed through prayer we're talking to god this is this is where we're going we're talking to god i'm communicating with god yes a lot of time we get in the place we want to communicate with god just we just yeah 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 Sometimes, I mean, most of the time, you need to stop and listen because yeah. communication is a two-way street. Come and on. so you got to listen to God and you got to listen to the word, what the word is saying. And yes. Listen to the spirit that God has put in you. And then you can go forth in prayer and pray. Yes. And you have to have a clean, clean slate. Ooh. I mean, no, we all sinners saved yeah. by grace, but we have to keep our life clean. We yeah. have to keep coming for the Lord with clean hearts. Not with haughty spirits or anything, or angry with with your husband or mm -hmm. your sister, your brother, your children. You can't come with anger to the Lord. You come asking Him because you know it's important that these things happen in people's life. That they, the will of God is complete in their life. And so we have to make a sacrifice to do that. And yep. I praise God that the Spirit of God working with the saints at, at Bethel has been wonderful. We make a phone call, or we make a, a a text, and it's just like, and the prayers just go out and out. The yes. messages go out, and the prayers go up, and oh. God brings down the blessing. Woo. And we've seen it that time and time after time, see God move in that way. So that's my experience of being leading, leading prayer in accessory. Yes, ma'am, said the. Uh... The message goes out and the prayers go up and the blessings come down. Oh, my yeah, goodness. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> oh, man, you know, that that's beautiful. It makes me think of how the scripture talks about the incense that went up before mm -hmm. God's prayers. And, you know, um, I, when you said that, it made me think of when I was a young kid and we talked about how um, the cycle of rain, when rain comes down, right? And right. then. Uh, uh, through through the climate and the weather change, it evaporates and it goes back up and it's caught up. And you just think about prayer as that cycle. Uh, you know, prayers go out up, and 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 here comes the Lord just moving on over us. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, well, 
Lord. Lord. Praise Lord. God. It just brings you joy and, and yes. happiness when you just see God work through prayer. It's just amazing. It's fascinating. Yes. God is fascinating. So what happens when he does is fascinating. So I just get excited. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Tear up this courtroom, this virtual courtroom. I don't know if there's going to be anything left. Listen. <laughs> so Thank you, there are many that, uh, you know, if you talk to some people, they say that um, they don't pray because they don't know how to pray, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and can you share with us um, how it is that we, sh we should see God in prayer? How can how can we develop a prayer life? You talked about, you know, yourself being very young and your parents, um, you know, having you pray with them, your aunts calling you to pray and, and different ones that knew you and and in that prayer, how God had used you even at a young age. So can you please talk to us about how we can start to pray? You know, especially sometimes we feel like, well, I don't have the right words to say like somebody else, this person or that person. You know. We don't. We don't have the right word to say unless the Spirit of God come in us and help us. But you have to learn that to pray is to pray is to pray God's will to be done. And the way we pray God's will to be done is through His Word. His Word is His, is the, his will. And so, if you're saying you don't know how to pray, open the book. Yes. Open the book up, and you just go through. You can start with Psalm 91. It's a prayer of protection. He yeah. has dwelt in the secret place of the Most High. Yeah. You know, just the word of God. Don't say you can't pray. Come on. Take that, that scripture and you'll say, it just says, uh, he that dwells in the secret place. Yeah. He said, Lord, let me dwell in the secret place. Beautiful. You just yeah. insert, interject your name or the person that you're praying yeah. for right through the scriptures. Yes. And he's praying the will of God. And he hears that prayer. And yes. he's touched by our prayers. And then mm. we have a sincerity in our prayer. We uh, can't pray around with God. We got to pray for real, for real. And today, in the time that we live in, everybody needs to be praying. Everybody yeah. needs to be trying to find the word of God. And don't say you can't pray, because you can. That's right. <laughs> wow, that's that's beautiful. Praying the will of God. Put that in the chat. Pray the will of God. Yes. Word back to him because he wants us to speak his word. He yes. wants us to declare his word in the earth. That yes. is, so that's wow, profound. <laughs> um, how has, and, and you've talked about, uh, you know, the Lord using you down through the years in intercessory, leading it. Can you talk about how intercessory prayer has impacted um, the ministry at New Bethel? Talk about how, how it has impacted, and, and even as you've seen it, you know, throughout the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I've seen the impact of prayer at New Bethel for a long time. And even uh, just recently, during the time of the pandemic. Mm. Yes. And here we are in this time when everyone's getting sick, everyone's dying. Everyone is uh, just up in up in arms, and God led our pastor and the prayers and the intercessors to focus on Him. Mm. We saw ourselves go through COVID and the pandemic, and without anybody dying from from that pandemic. Yes, Lord. that's through prayer. That's through a good leadership. Through yes. our pastor, yes. our prayer intensified yes. during that time. We had prayer like every, I think it was every day at six six o'clock in the morning, and we still have prayer now. We have pastor's prayer on you know on Wednesday morning at seven fifteen, yes. and then we have prayer at um, seven fifteen at, at no six fifteen. I'm sorry. 715 on, on Wednesday night, and then we have Sunday morning prayer yes. at seven o'clock. And we have this, we see God moving wow. through the prayers, through the pandemic. We yes. saw the, the offering didn't go away. The offerings kept coming. The mm. people kept coming. Even we were in, sitting out in the, in the parking lot in oh. our car 
We were all worshiping God and was going forth and praising God. We came through the pandemic because of prayer, because of the love of the God in our hearts. And my, he's just merciful. That's just him. Yes. You see your heart being sincere. And so you think about your church, you want to, you pray for your pastor. You pray for the leaders. You pray for the elders and the yes. deacons. You pray for the congregation. Yes. And you have to do that to keep the church going. Yes. We, we, we built on prayer. You have to continue to build on prayer. Mm, wow. That's powerful. And yeah. that even goes back into even the first uh, part of your testimony that you gave uh, about how the church was built on prayer, as you even just said, continuing those foundational things, mm -hmm. building on those foundational things, prayer, praying for one another, you know, how the love of God is demonstrated from person to person. Mm -hmm. um, last question I will ask you before you leave the stand tonight. Okay. What makes inter intercessory prayer so vital to the life of the believer? Why is it so important for us to engage in intercessory prayer? It's so important. It's so vital to the believer, to the life of the believer, to know who they're talking to, know that it's God himself. Yes. The only way you can live this life is through God's word, and connection with him. If you're praying, you have a connection. You have a connection with the one who can answer the prayer. Wow. And so um, we just need God's spirit to lead and guide us. And uh, we have to know that he hears us. He searches our hearts. It's vital because that's a time when God can say, hey, Frida, you off. you off now. You need to get back on this way. You did something wrong. You spoke to somebody wrong. The prayer purges us and cleanses us because when you come before God in prayer, you got to come clean. Yes. Because you got to, you know, each time I pray is, Lord, forgive me for anything that I've done or yes. caused someone to hurt or stalk or, you know, or just looked at something maybe I shouldn't have looked at. But God will come to us and we have to have prayer. It's our lifeline. Yes. Prayer yes. is our lifeline. And and you can't have prayer without the word of God. Man. So that's what I feel. That's what I feel about it. <laughs> oh, wow. Dynamic impact that, that you, you, you know, you, you prayed at the beginning when you said you just want to, to, you know, say something that's going to help somebody and surely tonight you have, God has used you in a mighty way to talk about the importance and the impact, the evidence of intercessory prayer. Thank God for, for you being a seeker of prayer and allowing God to continue to use you in that. God bless you. Wow. All right. Boy, okay. See? All right. Lord, yes. It's always a praise break. I yeah. tell you. <laughs> thank you, I thank God. Yes. Woo. I, go ahead and pray. I Listen. yield. I yield. <laughs> awesome. Always time for some praise. <laughs> Our last witness, expert witness of tonight, will be Sister Sean Dansler. And she's going to be talking to us about evidence of personal testimony. Evidence of personal testimony. Amen. And call her up to the stand and her scriptures for tonight are Acts chapter 4 and 13 and Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34. Jeremiah 31, 33 to 34 says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, that I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. Mm. This is flowing from where we started with the top all the way down and and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, the Lord, for they shall all know, for, excuse me, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. And I will remember their sin no more. Lord Jesus. 
Good Lord. Okay. Acts 4 and 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Oh my goodness. Lord, can we make it? Can we make it to the stand, Lord? Because it's just getting so good. Uh, Sister Sean, Sister Sean Dantzler, can you please share uh, your background as a seeker, as an investigator uh, of the word of God and how you came uh, to Kansas City, how you got here to New Bethany? Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you, Sister Frida, and God bless you, Elder Green. Beautiful. To follow that up, I'm kind of intimidated, to be honest. I'm like, woo, woo, it's too good. But um, very encouraging. I have to say that I was brought up in the church my entire life. My dad was a minister. He was a deacon. He had actually fallen out of church for a certain amount of time when I was a child and did not come back until I was 16. That is when the biggest blessing of my life happened. 1997, October 2nd, I received the Holy Ghost. Right. And it was a huge thing um, because it was an explosion, as they call it. 97 Holy Ghost explosion. Uh, majority of our young people got saved that day, that year. Um, I mean, from the smallest to the tallest, to the shortest, to the widest. I mean, yeah. we just got it, you know, and it was such a blessing that, you know, the Lord, he wrote on my heart that yes. day. Yes. And I remembered that. You know, and I actually, as I was growing up, I always wanted the Holy Ghost, but I just kind of felt like it was out of reach sometimes. Um, I can't explain it. It just was, I felt like this is so hard. I don't know why this is so hard. And when I got it, when I tell you God came right on in, the minute I let go, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. But um as a seeker, I actually went through a lot in my young adult life being saved at 16. You know, it's exciting. You're excited. You're happy. But then there's that flesh part that feels like I'm missing out on this. I'm missing out on that. So I, I did. I dibbled, I dabbled in some stuff, you know, that I should not have been in. And had it not been for the grace of God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Had it not been for the grace of God, I would not be here to Kansas City. All right. All but right. it took, I was 28 years old, and my father had been sick with a very rare form of cancer. Um, and we had him for four years after he was diagnosed. And I was out and about doing my own thing in the world when I lost my father. And it shattered my entire world. It just shattered me because I knew what I had been taught. I knew where I was supposed to be in Christ. And I wasn't there because I was being selfish. I thought I was missing out on things. I wanted to do this. and I wanted to do that. And I think I've said this to my husband before. When you're doing your own thing, if you really truly have the word written on your heart, you yeah. really truly have God down in you. The Holy Ghost never shuts up. It don't <laughs> stop. I mean, I literally, oh, yeah. yeah, I would be somewhere where I shouldn't be. And all of a sudden, oh my God, he's talking to me. Right. Why are you here? What yeah. are you doing? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for you. I did not leave you. All you right. left me. But I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. So, seeking. You yeah. Know? I was seeking. I was longing for him when I didn't even really realize in my heart that's really what I wanted. And that was a blessing in itself. So right. when he took my father from me from this life, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? My spiritual advisor my 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 everything pretty much how who am i going to talk to now i love my mommy but my dad daddy's girl you know but god took him yeah and i remember when i said okay lord 
I don't know how I'm going to get back. I don't know. But if you let me come back. Yes, 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 yes. You yes, let me yes, yes, come back. Yes. All right. I will serve you yes. for the rest of my life. Mm. And so I always say my father's passing was bittersweet. Because yes. even though he's not here in the flesh. All right. God said, I got to take him mm. in order to save you. All right. All right. You sought me. Here I am. Yeah. 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 All and right. I, I, whew, I got married to my husband several years later and we had been in the same church our entire life and we were continuing to seek God for our spiritual life. Yes. We knew that there was something more that God wanted from us to do. Yes. And it was scary to leave home, to leave the place that you know and you don't know anything else. It was mm -hmm. very scary. But I remembered a message that Bishop Brady preached, and I didn't even know who he was at the time, but it was a long time ago. I was in my early, I think my early, late 20s, maybe. And the death of the anointing, I believe, was his message. It was on VHS, yeah, yeah. DVD, DVD, no, DVD. Yep, it was DVD, yeah. And I remembered him <laughs> from that message. And I told my husband, I said, mm. this is him. This mm -hmm. is him. <laughs> yeah. And when we, I, I mean, honestly, finding New Bethel online was literally just a blessing Yes. I really didn't like seek it out very hard. It just kind of popped up in my feed. And so the Lord migrated us here after we sought him. Yes. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, testimony. Just giving us your background as a seeker. You think about how God, I'm not going to tell your story because, you know, the song says you can't tell it like I can tell it. No, I ain't even going to try, but I just, I thank God just for what he has done and what he's doing. You think about it and you can reflect. We each can reflect on our back then and to where we are now. That's why the scripture said they looked at these men and they said, wow, these men have been with Jesus. They probably at some point looked at Peter and said, he's that smelly fisherman, that, that, that stinky fisherman, that, that no good fisherman. But instead they said, this man has been with Jesus. Wow. Mm. So can you please talk to us about as God was transitioning you, not only from physical location, but even spiritually, um, in what ways did God reveal himself during and since that transition? Um, I would say that a lot of prayer, Sister Frida, lots and lots of prayer because my husband moved me here first. So I was here for a few months with family, but yet alone. And my husband is definitely my better half. He's my spiritual advisor. He just took on that role because that's just who he is, you know. And I learned so much from him, but I had to kind of take responsibility for my own spiritual life, right. you know. Husband's not here to remind you to pray. Husband's not here to pray with you, you know, physically. But I know he's praying for me from Omaha. And so God came in. It was that same small, still voice that I had heard yeah, when yeah. I was out in the bar, when mm -hmm. I was out late at night doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Mm -hmm. It was that same voice that said, I was with you. When you were 20 something, mm -hmm. now you're 40 something. I'm still here. Right, right, right. And right, so right. that was just amazing to me in itself yes. because if yes. you allow the Lord, if you allow him to talk to you and not always talking to him, telling him what you want, I had to learn to listen for his voice. Yes. I couldn't ask my husband. What did God say? What did he tell you for me? Mm -hmm. I had to be the one to get on my knees yeah, and pray yeah, yeah. and talk to him so that he could reveal himself 
to me. I'll show you a new thing. Yeah. I didn't know that new thing was going to be New Bethel at first. Wow. Yes. No idea. Yes. But I knew something new Mm. had to happen in my life for me to grow spiritually. And so God began to deal with me on my own. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of crying. Yeah. Did a lot of snotting, did a lot of, maybe I need to go back to Omaha. This is just too much. I don't know. But God was like, mm-mm. Right. You were seeking me for yeah. a reason. Yeah, I'm yeah. answering you. Now, are you going to listen? Wow. Yes. Wow. I will do, you can put that in the chat. A new thing. New thing. A new thing. Oh, my goodness. Listen. Wow. Okay. Listen, I'm just going to jump straight to the cross here. This is my my cross examination. What has been the impact of your walk with God since you have made this transition in your life? You talked about the the difficulties that you have faced um, uh, even in transitioning. You know, it is not an easy thing to move from one place to another. but talk about what the impact has been on your walk with God. What evidence has God shown and proven to you that that has really taken your walk to the next level? Um, that's a loaded cross question. Uh, <laughs> but right off the bat, I can say that my prayer life mm. has transformed immensely. I was one of the ones, and my husband knows this, that I never wanted to pray out loud. I had a problem praying out loud because all my life I've heard Sister Jo Schmo over here. Oh, my gosh, she's an awesome prayer. You know, we go to church. We have corporate church prayer, and they get different people on the microphones, and they just praying, you know, and you shook like, yes, yes, yes. And then here I am afraid to speak up. For myself to the Lord. And I'm like, Lord, you know what I'm thinking? Like, do I really need to say it? You know? And I just, I didn't right. feel like I was eloquent in speech enough mm-hmm. to, to say anything to him. I just assume, you know me, God, you know, you got me. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's just not the case. You got to speak to him. Yeah, yeah. You got to tell him what you want. Uh-huh. You got to throw his word back at him. Well, Lord, you yeah. said, yes. now you said, it's in your word. This is what you yes. said. And I know I can hold you to that. Yes. I yes, can't yes. hold myself to words because mm-hmm. I am wretched. Oh, wretched man am I. Yeah, but yeah. oh Lord, I know you mm-hmm. and I trust you. All right. So my prayer life yeah. made a, a, a turn when I say a turn. Every time I turn around at work, I'm in a patient room. I'm in the bathroom and I am just taking my time like, okay, Lord, here I am. And I'm not eloquent in speech, but oh, here I am. Oh, wretched man, here I am, Lord. And I know you're listening. And it's just a beautiful thing to be able to communicate with the Lord and to be able to listen to his voice, to hear his voice. It's a It's a calm that has come over my spirit. It is the spirit of, I want to share this gift of prayer with other people where I would have never prayed for anybody or with anybody. Mm -hmm. But there are a few people that I am close with at my job. And although they're not believers, they actually, I've kind of worn them down a little bit to where Mm -hmm. When they get into a little bit of trouble and I say, well, girl, I am praying for you. Where one said to me one time, I don't do prayer. I don't do church. You know, I don't believe in organized religion. And I said, that's all right. That's all right. You know, she got sick. And I said, I'm praying for you. And she said, I will take all the prayers I can get. Yeah. I counted it a victory. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I said, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Because this is the person who didn't even want to hear about it. But she has since received that. She received it. And one day at work, I don't know why, but the Lord just told me, 
lay your hands. There was two of them. And uh, I just laid my hands on both uh, of them. Yeah. And they were like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm praying. Just mm. let me. Wow. I went to God on their behalf. I don't know what they were going through. I don't know. But wow. just the fact yeah. that I did that. Yeah. That's how I know my life is being transformed. Yes. Being here yes. in Kansas yes. City mm -hmm. under Bishop Brady's tutelage. When I yes. first started listening to him, he was talking about living your best abundant life. Yes. And sometimes you think when you're unsaved and living that life that you're living your best abundant life. I'm traveling. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Oh, yes, I'm living. My Honey, you ain't living if you ain't living for Christ. Yeah, yeah. That's so it. being here. That is just one piece of evidence that I have to how my life is transformed. Wow. Beautiful. That, that, wow. Listen, I, I'm going to just tell you right now, I don't know how this witness stand was able to, to hold up under that, that awesome anointed pressure that y'all put on it tonight. That, 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 listen, oh my goodness, the, your best abundant life. Listen, I, I don't know what else to do. The defense rest. Everybody got to rest after that. Just some good, good word. Beautiful evidence. I thank the Lord for all of you as witnesses. And thank God for the, the, the word that came forth, the witness that came forth. Um, remember, we started off by talking about how investigators dig deep into the evidence. They dig deep into the evidence to make sure that they see the truth of what the evidence is pointing at, not what they wanted to point at, not changing the evidence up to make it fit, but following the evidence as it is. And tonight you have seen three expert witnesses who who have spent time and God has has truly used them tonight to speak to us on our behalf. So we thank you tonight for. Uh, this beautiful session that you came to join. Can I get a witness? The seekers are taking the stand. Amen. They have taken the stand and tore it up. And now we just got to rest our case. I am going to turn it over into the hands of Elder Green. Amen. Amen. Boy, Woo. God has blessed us truly tonight for each one. I can see I was sitting over here thinking about how they all hook together. Even though we didn't talk together, the word transform went through all session. Okay. Uh, and to me, that was outstanding. And I thank God for uh, Sister Frida. And as I thought we were summing up something God gave me was that she was saying how she stepped out of line in her life. And uh, something a lot of us have. And I thought about how one time, the prayer was, Lord, spare me till I recover. And you got to talk to God. And then I thought God has let me know to make sure I mention to someone out there in the audience and in TV land that God is married to the backslider. So no matter how far you went, he's still married to you and waiting for you to come home. He's waiting for you to come home, dust yourself off, get in place, come back to him, repent, confess, repent, and get back in your place with God. And then uh, I like to admonish us when we're working with people to make sure we present God as a personal savior, not a distant God. Because sometimes we make it seem like God is so far away and that's why some people come to seek the Holy Ghost. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I said, look, 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 God is not there. He can hear you. And so you know, they think they have to say it fast or scream or have eloquent speech. You know, you just have to be obedient. So I want you to know out there tonight as we end with prayer that God is calling you. That's why when you're watching the night, you might have had tears coming down your face. You might have felt chills. At one time, you might feel like, I'm going to turn this off because you were being convicted. And that's because God is reaching out to you. Uh, God is letting me feel your pain. He loves you. He's personal. He said, his law is love. 
he's not here to judge you at this time. There is coming a judgment day, but why he's loving, well, come on into the house where there's safety. And the night I want you to remember our sisters and brothers in prayer, there's different ways you could give. By this time, we know we got Cash App. We got uh, Givelify. You could bring it in person or you could mail it in. Whichever way you do, when you hear the word of God going forth and you know it's doing what it should do, you ought to plant a seed on it. Only God could tell you. Tonight, seeds were planted. That's all we were doing was planting seeds. God will war. Somebody else will water. God will give the increase. We planted seeds tonight. And we want that seed that we have planted tonight to germinate and grow in your life so that you can have a relationship with God so you don't have to worry when your husband is gone that you can't pray. And, and when things go wrong in your life, you don't have to wait to call Auntie Frida. You could call Jesus. He's so papa. He's ah, shama, ikana. Ooh, Jesus. He's so personal. He's waiting on you. We want to remember those who have lost loved ones this week. We want to remember Deacon Jones, the Ca uh, Nettie Camels family. We want to remember those in hospitals, those that are at home sick. We have Pastor Talbert ill. We have Minister Tracy sick, Jenkins ill. We have um, Sister Meredith Bayless that's not feeling well. And God is helping me, but I want you to pray for me tonight. And we're going to go out with a prayer. Now, look, we don't care. You can get the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm telling you that how personal God is. If you apply the principle, you can get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And if you spoke at home, you'll speak again when you come out because God will have it us to be a witness. So let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this session tonight on seekers. God, as we continue to seek you every day, God, that we will become who you will have us to be. Help us not to walk by someone and not witness that you have called us to do. Lord, in the name of Jesus, allow our life to be a witness. Remember those who have lost loved ones. Remember the people among us who are ill, Lord. Remember our nation tonight, God. We're in trouble, God. I, I stand in the gap. Hallelujah. And I plead the blood for our nation, God. I plead the blood for Ukraine, Lord, and Pastor Alex, Lord. I, oh, God, be their strong tower in the name of Jesus. Be their defender, Lord. Be our defender. And we'll give your name the praise and the glory. And we thank you right now for the souls you're going to save because of this session. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week where we will have the last S, and that is sanctification. Have a blessed day.